I could go on and talk about all the parts of the team. The, the reality is, it's very similar for all of us. We really want to do the best for the team, for our fans, and most importantly, for each other. I'm just lucky that I'm standing here in front of the camera two days later and my emotions have calmed down. Is the team okay? Well, firstly, thanks very much for asking. Um, I think as you can expect, we all sort of feel a, a, a bit of pain from this weekend, um, and that's normal. That's something we won't really get over until we get a chance to put that right, which hopefully will be at the next race in France. I think when you're in sport, you realise that you have weekends like this, and what's really important is how we bounce back from that. How do we take the pain from that, turn that into a positive energy for learning, work out how we extract all the learning that we can from that, turn that into future performance. And that's what we'll really be concentrating on. Were Hamilton and Bottas running particularly different setups and wings on their cars? Well, actually the setups were fairly similar. Probably the biggest difference between the two cars was the wings that they were running. So Lewis ran a lower downforce level, the level that the simulations predicted would be optimum. And Valtteri chose a slightly higher downforce level something we predicted would be a little bit slower, maybe a tenth of a second elapsed lower. How did we go about choosing that and why did we end up in that position? Well, that was Valtteri's choice to run that wing and he did so because he felt that would be quicker for him. So I think what you need to understand is, is this is a difficult circuit. It's a circuit where it's quite hard to get heat into the front tyres and it's one where you need real confidence to get around the circuit because the walls are really close. And so getting heat into those tyres is really important. And if you can go a little bit quicker, put a little bit more energy into those tyres, the car will go quicker as a result and you end up in a sort of positive performance spiral. So it's more important that Valtteri was happy with his car, that he felt confident in his car, than the small difference the simulation predicted in, in ultimate performance. Valtteri towed Lewis in qualifying. So why didn't we switch that around such that one driver towed on the first run and the other driver towed on the second run? Well. We have a set of rules that we apply to make it fair for the drivers race to race. And one of those rules is that race by race, each driver gets to decide whether they go first or second in qualifying. So this week's was Lewis's turn and Lewis decided because of the benefit of the toe that he goes second. Now normally that wouldn't matter too much because normally what we would try to do is to get Valtteri in a good position on the track so that he could get a toe from his competitors, from the other cars. One of the difficulties we face this weekend is we were trying to use a prep lap to get the best lap. That's how we felt we'd get the quickest time. So what we do is we go out the, the pits, we go round to the start, finish straight, we go round again and then start our fast lap. And that's just about trying to get the tyres into the right window. Unfortunately for Valtteri and for us, our competitors weren't doing the same. They were trying to get their fastest lap on their first lap after their out lap. And that made it really difficult to try and get Valtteri in the right place relative to the competitors so that he got a good toe. We saw the, if you look at what happened to Leclerc as well, we had a similar problem there where we towed Leclerc up the start finish straight, giving him a, a, an advantage in his own qualifying. And that was from exactly the same problem. It was difficult to position ourselves relative to the competitors. And on the very last run in qualifying, actually Valtteri did end up in a really good position for a toe. He was also on a really quick lap. Probably not quick enough to be pole, but quick enough to be a lot further up the timesheets. But unfortunately, the red flag put pay to that. Did Lewis come into the pits too early? What we were looking for is an opportunity to come in to make sure that we weren't undercut. So as the race progressed and the gap behind us built and we could get into the pits without coming out behind a slower car, we needed to take that opportunity. If we'd have gone longer, um, all we'd have done is given Red Bull the opportunity to undercut us. And while it looked like from the TV, an overcut might be a better solution. The reality was the undercut was the quickest solution. The reason it didn't pay off for us is we just weren't quick enough. We struggled a bit too much with the degradation on the soft tyre, and we weren't quick enough when we came out on the hard. So it didn't really matter which way we went. We chose what should have been, in theory, the better option. How significant was the damage to Lewis's front wing? Well, the reality is we don't actually really know. Um, Lewis picked up that damage um, as a result of going through the debris that had come from Max's crash and actually we ended up with a chunk of debris stuck between the rear suspension and the diffuser and that was probably the biggest impact aerodynamically. So trying to separate out the front wing was, was too difficult. 
But what did happen is the red flag obviously gave us an opportunity to fix both problems. So in some ways we were lucky with that. Why were Lewis's brakes smoking at the restart of the race? The drivers are trying to get the, the tyres in the optimal window for the start. They're trying to do lots of other things on, on that lap to the grid. But in trying to get the tyres to the optimal state, what they need to do is to, is to put heat into them. On the rears, it's relatively easy. The drivers spin the wheels up and therefore they put surface temperature in that way. On the fronts, the driver will weave or he will put heat in from the brakes. So Lewis was trying to maximise the heat he was pushing into the rim from the brakes and that caused them to get hot enough that they smoked. It's not an issue at all because as soon as the car gets going and the airflow starts coming through the brake ducts, the brakes will then cool down again and that's completely fine. And so that wasn't the issue that Lewis then had at the first corner, it's completely something different. What exactly happened to Lewis at the restart of the race? At the start of the beginning of the race, we're not actually allowed to talk to the drivers. So we can't talk them through the settings they need to change. So as a result of that, we try and simplify things as much as we possibly can. We try and produce tools the drivers can use that reduces the workload they have to go through because there's a huge amount for them to do. So one of the buttons we've got, it's called brake magic. I, to be honest, I don't know why we call it brake magic. Is a button that the drivers can press and that allows them to get heat into the brakes. One of the big things it does is it moves the brake balance, so the proportion of the front brake energy to the rear brake energy, all the way as far forward as we can get it. And that allows us to put heat into the front brakes and therefore heat into the rims and into the tyres. So Lewis had done all of the right things, he got the car to the grid, he switched off the various buttons and settings that he needed to switch off, switched on the ones he needed to switch on, and he was all set to start the race properly. He made a the fantastic start, he got himself up alongside Perez and as he and Perez were sort of shuffling position, Lewis swerved and in the process of swerving, he just clipped the magic button um, and unfortunately he didn't feel he'd, he'd done it, so he had completely no awareness he was going to have a problem. At the point he then braked, which was the normal point for him to brake, he was in a position where he got all of the brake balance shifted forward, which put all of the load through the front tyres and as a consequence they locked. And from that point, there was nothing he could do but go wide. I know speaking to Lewis yesterday that Lewis sort of feels a chunk of blame for that. But the reality is Lewis makes so few mistakes. That's what really sets him apart from some of the other drivers. You know, and it's our duty to try and give him a car where it's more difficult for him to make mistakes. So we need to take our share of that, look at how we can improve that. And that's something we'll put in place for the next race. Did Toto's headset survive? The sort of emotion you saw from Toto is what we all feel. We all go through that same emotional roller coaster when we're following the race, and we all sort of feel that really strong sense of emotion when things don't go to plan. You can see that at the racetrack when you watch the TV footage. You know, when something goes wrong at the track, those guys really feel it. You can see it in their body language, you can see it in the, the look on their faces. We have the same thing in the factory. You know, if you look at the aerodynamicists or the designers, if the chassis is not the quickest chassis that weekend, those guys feel it and they push themselves. It's the same for our teammates at HPP. They also feel it if we've had an issue with the PU or if we've just, for whatever reason, lost out with the PU. I could go on and talk about all the parts of the team. The, the reality is it's very similar for all of us. We really want to do the best for the team, for our fans, and most importantly, for each other. I'm just lucky that I'm standing here in front of the camera two days later and my emotions have calmed down. Both drivers struggled this weekend, but why did Valtteri struggle more than Lewis? I think at this circuit, one of the difficulties is getting the warm-up of the front tyre. And it's also a circuit where you need to have real confidence. You know, the walls are really close and if you get it wrong, you're going to put it into the wall. And those two things kind of go together, because if you can go a little bit quicker, if you can get yourself a little bit closer to the wall because you're confident, then you'll get a bit more heat into the tyres because you've got more duty. You get a bit more heat into the tyres, you get a bit more grip and you can go faster. And so you end up with this sort of positive spiral that I mentioned before. If I look at the weekend, I think Lewis found a little step in, in P3 with, with setup, and that seemed to help him find a little bit more from the car. And all of a sudden, we went from sort of struggling a bit, to sort of being really in the front runners on the pace. And Lewis took that all the way through qualifying, the lap he set in Q Q3 to be second. You know, it wasn't one lap, actually, he was quick all the way through qualifying. With Valtteri, I think Valtteri just didn't get to that position. He didn't find that sort of last little bit of confidence to be able to be in that positive spiral in the same way. 
And I think if you sort of look at the weekend as a whole and you look at what happened in qualifying, you look at what happened in practice, there were a lot of drivers that understeered wide and put the car into the wall, presumably just because they didn't quite get the front tyres in the window. And to the credit of our drivers, both our drivers avoided that mistake. I think it's also worth bearing in mind that if you sort of look at this weekend and compare it to last weekend in Monaco, in Monaco, it was Valtteri that was able to get the tyres into the window and get the best of them. And it was Lewis that was struggling a bit more. So I think this is something that we need to understand as a team. It's something we need to work on and improve because if we don't improve on that, there will be other circuits this year where we'll find the same problems. I know we're still unlocking the potential of the W12. Are there any lessons we can take from this weekend and use going forward? We went into this weekend knowing we were going to have some issues, um, but probably not quite expecting to be where we were come P2 on Friday. What we put in place was a, a series of tests to try and get more understanding, and actually out of that has come a couple of theories, one that's really promising. Um, unfortunately, it, the, the tests that we did didn't happen until P3, and it was after we'd done the long runs. So while we found good pace for qualifying, we probably didn't get the best setup around that for the race weekend and for the, for the actual race itself. So this is something we need to, to look at, something we need to work out how we would build the setup around the changes we've made, and then we can carry that forward into, into future race weekends where we have similar issues. The other thing to bear in mind is both this circuit and Monaco are probably outliers, um, and actually we'd hope not to have some of the issues we've had in the next couple of races. So, so fingers crossed we'll be in a better position. Thank you for all of your questions to my first ever race debrief. I've been told this is the most questions we've ever been asked, so, so thank you for that. I know talking to my colleagues that this is something we really enjoy. It's really nice to be able to answer all of your questions. So we'll look forward to be back in two weeks' time after the French Grand Prix where we'll be answering more. <laughs>